Hello and greetings. On this video, I'll teach how you install a say, social network, uh, open source software that runs really good. They have a community based and then they have the enterprise um, edition. But here's their website. Um, you know, hum, I guess, short for human, humanhub.org. Um, it's actually pretty sweet. It runs pretty good if you want to run your own uh, private uh, social site for, for work or what have you. Um, it's it's really good. So, anyways, let's go ahead and jump right in. Um, so, let me let me actually get rid of this and let me actually bring up what we're gonna need. So, there's a couple things we're gonna need ahead of time. Um, so let me actually so the one thing we're going to need is a either a self-hosted site or a hosted site either one uh hosted obviously would be godaddy namecheap uh one in one uh there's there's just a number of them another thing you're going to need is a ftp client either filezilla um, I mean, I use FileZilla for everything I do, but uh, or or else the ability to transfer files and folders um, to the the actual public site uh, or the public folder depends on who you use. If you use uh, like a cPanel, more likely the folders can be called public. I use ISP Config. The folders called web. Okay, and then the other thing we're going to need is a PHP database and a PHP user. Um, that either your provider is going to give you, your hosting provider, or uh, if you, obviously, if you have a self-hosted, then you're going to give yourself one. And you're going to need an, act an active uh, email. Those are the, the, the four fundamental pieces that you need to, for this. Let me go ahead and get out of this. So the very first thing we're gonna do, and this is this is actually the how we're gonna end up doing this. Uh, this is actually number four. Number four. Okay. Uh, okay. So the the first thing, obviously, we're gonna need to download the zip or the tar file from the actual website. And here's the actual website and their download. The next thing we're going to do is going to be upload the downloaded files and folders to either the root folder or a subdomain folder. So if you, like in my situation, what I did is I created a subdomain because I, I don't want it, for all my testing I have subdomains, it's just easier for me, for all my testing. Um, and the next thing we're going to need is either is actually to point your, the browser either to the main site or a, the created subdomain site. So let's break this down. The main site would be this, you know, HTTP test.net. A subdomain would be HTTP hum, you know, human or hum hub. I don't even know how to pronounce that. Uh, dot test dot net. So this would be the main site, but this would be the subdomain that I put on the left side. So let's go ahead and jump right in. And then from there, then we're going to obviously need, gonna need to just follow the directions and to complete the installation. So let's go ahead and jump right out of this. Oops. Okay. You know what it is. So Step one, obviously, is to go to the actual site, which is uh, humehub.org. The name I just can't get over. But the software worked really good, so. Um, but yeah, you can go ahead and click on under download book. And right here, I normally do the tar file. Um, tar, I've been using it for years and obviously works fine. Zip also on Windows, but um, yeah, I just... 
So you, you're going to fill in the blanks, um, the newsletter and all that good stuff. Um, or you can just go ahead and click on uh, no thanks and just download. Oops. And then we're going to go ahead and be greeted by the download. Give it one second, it's going to pop up. And here we go. We're going to go ahead and click on OK. And the download is complete. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and minimize this. And now we're going to, what we're going to do is open up our file manager. Under our file manager, we're going to find the actual file we just downloaded. I have a tendency to create a new folder. Um, it's just easier for me to, to to keep track of what I'm downloading and, and what have you. So um, I'm gonna call this uh, hub, H-U-M hub, and I'm going to move the file I just downloaded right onto it. So let's go ahead and jump, get into that, and. I'm going to just double click on a tar file. Okay. And I'm going to extract. And click under extract here. And that's just going to expand the files. Go ahead and click on close. Close here. And now you notice we have another folder here. So we have the file, the, the tar file. And now we actually have the actual folder. And these are all the files that are actually in the folder. So once we get that out of the way, we're going to go ahead and I'm going to open my FileZilla. Oops. So here's my FileZilla. Let me make it a little bit smaller. I'm going to go ahead and click on Connect. And, oops. So you'll notice on my on my particular setup is I actually have web. That's my root folder. So if I go under here, you'll notice that I created a folder that's called HUM Hub. In there is where I'm going to extract all the files that I just downloaded. So on the left here is the files and folders that are on your computer and on the right side are the files and folders that are on, on your server. So local site and remote site. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and double click on human hub and open the folder we downloaded. I'm just going to select them all by selecting control A as an apple on my keyboard and just dragging it over. Okay, so now the download's complete. I mean, the upload's complete, and you can see um, you can see that everything's on the right hand side. So here's all our files. So now we're ready to to open our browser. Let me close that out, and what we're gonna do is navigate on my sit on on my particular scenario situation or my the scenario that I'm creating is uh, so we are we are here so we already uploaded our file let me zoom in so we already uploaded the file via FTP now we are ready to point um, our browser to here I'm gonna use this because this is the one this is actually the one I'm testing with so I'm going to copy this, copy that, okay, oops, minimize that, and I'm just going to paste it right there, so, so I'm going to paste it right here, I'm going to paste and go, oops, paste and go. And now you'll notice that I'm greeted by, by the actual installation. Now, 
if something went wrong with your with your upload or if the pointing of your folders is off you won't get this this window will not pop up so this this is actually a good sign if you get to this por part then you're doing good then you're actually um, you're in, you're in the good of uh, the right path excuse me we're gonna click on next and since this is just my testing um, you'll notice that my my LDAP is not supported but that's optional if you'll notice here it's even explained that it's optional so here it is optional so this is on a production machine definitely this would be the way to go um, because that way you could just import all your users so from the server itself you could actually bring, um, take advantage of just bringing all, in all your users so since we're actually green on everything we're gonna go ahead and click on next and now we're gonna be greeted by the actual uh, all the credentials that we that we actually need so the very first one is gonna be what the host theme is gonna be um, uh, mine is gonna be local local host now if you're using GoDaddy or any other uh, uh, hosting service then they'll give you what the name is going to be and that's the name that's going to go right there the username is what the username of the of the actual SQL that user excuse me uh, yeah the SQL user for your database um, or the PHP whichever one whichever one that that, that they support so here I'm going to go ahead and paste mine make sure that there's no space okay and then there's two more things that it's gonna ask me which oops which is gonna be the password so let me enter the password and then the database name so the database name I have it right here let me just copy that and paste it so um, this is the database this is the username and this is the password okay click on next and we're just gonna wait for this okay so then the social network is actually pretty much almost ready to go and it tells you this okay of course blah 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 and this is fine you know um, this would be on my on my side it's gonna be freelance tech and that's for the network we're going to go ahead and click on next and this is the, the other piece that it will ask you and you know what kind of network is it going to be um, my company social network project uh, project management uh, school university and so forth uh, I'm actually going to set up as my company social uh, intranet and then um, project management that's good we click on next uh, then we're gonna it's gonna ask you what oh, it's pretty good it actually walks you through the whole thing external users can register yes uh, and then newly registered users can be activated by admin first need to be no not really uh, yes yeah, um, this is gonna be up to you if you want to do it this way or not basically on on the second one it just tells you that the admin has to activate the, every new registered user um, that's that works good but sometimes it becomes a drag especially if your organization is actually of a good size then um, you're gonna have customers log in and so forth uh, if that's the type of system that you might set up and you might just be chewing more than you want to chew you you might be chewing more than than you what you want um, definitely you want to register members via their email that way you, you keep track of their emails if anything you could always go on your database search for that particular email and just uh, inactivate it if you need to uh, and then this if you if you want guest users to view what's going on uh, yeah let's go ahead and turn everything on 
why not? And here's the next one, you know, basically um, that is very, very flexible. It keeps track of birthdays, files, custom, um, polls, tasks. That's fine. All, all this is actually good. Um, this is definitely something you want you you want to tweak your in your way, but um, let's see the full potential of this thing. Okay, so now it's gonna ask for the admin. So this is where I'm gonna enter my information. So freelance tech freelance tech at freelancetech.com then it's going to ask for my password and uh, freelancetech tech and com how about that and create the admin. Uh, blank that said your experiment. Yeah. So here, basically, what it's gonna do, it's gonna create, um, you know, bogus files, basically that will to avoid blank dashboards and so forth. So that's fine. It's gonna it's gonna actually set up ex uh, example contents. That's fine. So that way it doesn't look so so plain. And there it is. Here's the website actually kicking in. Um, hello. So here's the directory. I mean, people can actually see, find all their, you know, your coworkers and so forth uh, online right now. Total users. Um, yeah, it's pretty sweet. You can actually hear you have sign in, sign in setup. Um, well, I didn't put an email, but excellent. Again, um, hope this helped. Uh, subscribe, like always. Uh, all that, all that good jazz. Um, and follow us on, on our Facebook, um, freelancetech.com, and on our main site if you want. Also, uh, freelancetech.com. Thanks a lot, man. Thanks for watching.